Alright guys, in that last video I said I've not got a lot to do to get this thing running. Well I don't know what I was thinking because I've just been having a way up. There's loads to do. But in this video I intend to get it running under its own power and give it a test ride. So no time to waste, let's get making. These handlebars are at a great height if I'm stood on the floor. But once I'm stood on this deck, everything's 17 centimetres higher. So that means I'm going to have to extend this tube by 17 centimetres and then extend the bolt that holds the forks on. And that's what we're going to start with first. I'm going to weld this tube inside the forks. And this is the same diameter as this. So I'm going to cut a piece and weld it onto the top here. And that way the handlebars will fit onto this instead of the top of the forks. All I have to do then is extend the bolt. Dead easy. Let's get on with it. So this bolt I've just finished making gets threaded into the forks and then this tube goes inside the forks and the screw fits into the nut that I've got on top of the bolt that I've just made. It all gets tightened up. Check that that's nice and straight. That's great. Now what I do is I'm just going to weld this around here. And then I'm going to weld this piece on the top for the handlebars to attach to. But first I'm going to take the paint off. Oh there we go, it's not too bad. This time I'm not totally embarrassed. I've fitted the disc to the wheel and you'll notice I've fitted it on the left hand side and that's because when the caliper grabs onto the disc it has the same effect as tightening the disc up whereas if it was on the other side it'd have the effect of unscrewing the disc and the disc could fall off and then probably so would you. Next thing I need to do is to mount the caliper and to do that I need to weld a support bracket to the frame. These push bike disc calipers are fully adjustable. Underneath these two bolts there's a slot and providing you start off with the bolt in the centre of the slot then once you fit the caliper you're able to adjust two or three millimetres in either direction both front and back. But not only that you've got cupped washers which means you can rock the caliper either direction 
so that it perfectly lines up with your disc. So now all I have to do is make the support bracket. Let's get on with it. I've just made this, it's another part of the bike frame and this is going to get attached onto here and these are going to get welded onto here and that will give the frame a little bit of extra strength and also this will give me something to attach the fairing to even when I make the fairing. Well, I think you guys have seen enough cutting and welding for one video, so I'm going to get on with it while you're not looking. Catch you later. Well guys, you've probably just seen on the screen, it's five days later. So what have I been doing in that five days? Well, first of all, I finished all the welding off. And then, I fitted the batteries, the speed controller and the accelerator, just to see if I could get it running. Fitted it all in. Turn the key on, nothing. I just didn't know what to do. So I looked on the internet and found out that with the kind of thumb throttle that I've got, it doesn't matter if the key's on or off, well, it does a little bit. The key's got to be on. Well, forget that. When the key's switched on, you have to press the M button. You have to press the M button for everything to switch on. I think it's because um, instead of a key, you get a loop like this, which plugs in, which keeps the circuit on all the time. So by pressing the M button, that's how you switch things on and off. I just thought by putting a key in, that would switch things on and off. But anyway, we figured that out. So next thing is, I had to give it a try. So I got on, pressed the accelerator, and it chugged along at about five miles an hour. To say I was disappointed was, well, that's an understatement. It was absolutely terrible. I looked at it. Oh, wait a minute. It's in eco mode. There's two more modes. There's medium and there's high. So click, click, switched it into high mode, hit the accelerator, and it chugged along just a little bit faster. Now, when that happened, I thought to myself, I'm going to send it back. I'm going to send this wheel back because this is no good. What am I going to show you guys? Me, pretending it's going fast with a smile on my face by speeding the film up. But I'm not into doing that. I wanted you to see it, how it really is. But So before I sent the wheel back, I had a quick look on YouTube just to see if I could find some miracle that gives me more power. And I found it. There was a guy on the internet who had a thumb throttle very similar to mine. And he was going through the settings. So I compared them to mine and it was round about the same. And I realised I just had a few things set up wrong. I had the voltage right, but I had the, the power set wrong, I had this set wrong, that set wrong. It's, when I looked at the instructions, it's all translated from Chinese into English. And you just I couldn't understand any of it. Even though it was written in English, I couldn't understand any of it. So uh, anyway, so now I've got it working. I'm going to go and give it a test. Let's go and see how it works. Oh yeah.
believe it. I've only been out five minutes and I've got a sodding puncture. Well, at least I know it works. Catch you next time, guys.